I'm Cameron Hepburn from Vivid Economics and I'm delighted to present this report to you on the implicit price of carbon in the electricity generation sector in six major economies. The context for this report is that climate policy has been advancing considerably both in the lead up to Copenhagen and following Copenhagen. And indeed, in many economies around the world, the discussion now is about who is going to win the race uh, for clean energy. And in America, President Obama has made it very clear that he wants America to be the nation that leads the world in clean energy. And his Democrat and Republican senators, uh, many of them agree, uh, some of them don't, but many do. And in Europe, uh, the Europeans are already a leader in this area. They've got very tough emission reduction targets to 2020. And uh, just recently, a coalition of 30 CEOs of some of the biggest country, companies in Europe wrote to the Financial Times to urge their ministers and the European Commission to go even further and reduce emissions faster so that the price on carbon could be higher to induce uh, technological revolution and a shift to clean energy to support European competitiveness in the global economy over the next few decades. And it's not just the rich countries that are moving quickly on climate change. What's been quite impressive in the last uh, six months is action in China and in India. In China, for instance, there's emissions trading being piloted in eight cities and five provinces uh, over the next uh, one to five years. And most strikingly, they have an investment program of 750 billion US dollars. It's three quarters of a trillion dollars. It's a very large amount of money on renewable energy and uh, clean energy over, over the coming 10 years. And in India, there's already a carbon tax that applies to uh, the coal sector that effectively exporters of coal to India uh, are incurring. And that includes Australian exporters. So the world has been moving on climate change, notwithstanding the absence of an international agreement at Copenhagen. But what is difficult for uh, you and me to understand is just precisely how much effort different countries are going to. There's a lot of different policy announcements, but it's difficult to put them in a form that is comparable between different countries. And that's what this report tries to do. We look at what we call the implicit price of carbon uh, in the electricity generation sector for a range of different policies. What we mean by the implicit price of carbon is, for instance, if you put a renewable uh, energy target or portfolio standard in place, uh, that doesn't create an explicit price of carbon, but it does provide firms with an incentive to go from dirty methods of electricity generation to cleaner methods of electricity generation. And there is an implicit price that is equivalent to that type of policy. So the report uh, that you have available to read is the first of its kind. Uh, it's cutting edge, it's quite difficult work, and uh, it took us several months of analysis. But um, we're pleased to have got results that we think are robust and certainly transparent for six different uh, economies. That's Australia, China, South Korea, Japan, the United States, and the United Kingdom. And the report is a uh, report that focus on, focuses on reality. It's on policies and uh, programs that have already been implemented. It's not forward-looking, so it doesn't take into account plans which may not eventuate. And it doesn't take into account kind of theoretical notions of what a perfect government would, would do. It looks at real government behavior and looks at the actual implicit carbon prices in the electricity generation sector. And the results are quite striking. It's always good when you do quite a lot of research and end up with an interesting set of results. What we found is that in Australia, the implicit price on carbon in the electricity generation sector is around roughly two US dollars a tonne of CO2. That's not a particularly high price, but it does show that you know, Australia is already acting on climate change. Perhaps more striking was that the price in China is already 10 times that of Australia. And, and that's based on their action up to Copenhagen. So it's not incorporating the three quarters of a trillion going forward that China is about to invest in clean energy. The implicit price on carbon in the UK was 15 times higher, roughly, than that in Australia. And in Japan and the US, uh, implicit prices were two to three times as high as in Australia. 
So what this tells us is that all these countries are moving, whether they have emissions trading schemes or carbon taxes in place, there are Im implicit incentives to shift from dirty to clean energy. And uh, clearly Australia has some distance to travel in order to catch up to where the rest of the world is here. So there's clearly no risk that Australia will be leading the world on this issue. If anything, uh, we're running the race at the back of the pack. The other finding from the report, which is very interesting, is we were able to price these policies in terms of which ones were cheapest and which ones were most expensive. What we found was that the policies that were very targeted to specific sectors, uh, where governments are choosing a particular uh, low carbon energy source like solar or wind, they tended to have quite high prices on them. The policies that were most cost effective were broad based economy wide policies like emissions trading schemes and carbon taxes. So if you want to reduce your emissions, the cheapest way of doing it is a broad carbon price. So they're the key messages of the report. I commend it to you and I hope you enjoy reading it.